those during the presentation. And if we don't have time to answer them during the presentation, we will do a follow up at the end of it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the introduction as well. So uh, we'll get started with uh, social media 101. If everyone can actually help me out, can you put in what industry you are part of into the chat? That would really help me. I want to make sure that we're going to be covering a lot of information today. So I want to make sure that everything that we are covering, it, um, I could give specific examples to different industries. So really quick, uh, my name is Mark Nines. Okay, okay. We got a lot of people already. Rachel, awesome. August, Art, Stephanie, great. That really helps me out. Thank you so much. So, so my name is Mark Nines. Um, I've been helping out with uh, digital marketing for over six years now. Um, also on the advisory board for Texas State University and also the University of Houston. Um, so I'm really here to help you guys out. So if there's anything you have questions with, please drop it into the chat while we're going over it. I have a little bit of time afterwards for Q&A as well. But also if you want to connect with me, uh, Mark period Nanias, that's uh, my Instagram handle. So you guys could connect with me that way as well. Awesome, Luis, great. Thank you guys. Cool, so let's get started um, really quick. These are the benefits of taking social media seriously. Um, and really quick, can you guys see my chat or no? Can you see the chat box on my screen? Is that distracting for you guys? No? Okay, perfect, thank you. All right, so uh, these are the benefits of taking social media seriously. And, and, and this is really important because social media, it doesn't matter if it's Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, it provides an additional channel of sales for our business. And we're gonna get into different social media platforms. It increases word of mouth. And I know a lot of people and including myself, our businesses are built off of word of mouth, right? So this is what I like to call word of mouth 2.0 and that's social media because instead of going to a networking event, I can sit on my couch and literally reach out to 20, 30 individuals, business owners in a matter of five, 10 minutes. So it's word of mouth 2.0. It's pandemic proof because I think a lot of what we saw during like, the really, really tough times of COVID was when everything was completely shut down was, hey, how do I stay in front of my audience? How do I stay in front of my customers? How do I let my customers know that I'm still open and I can still service them? Right. So having an online presence is so important and something that is not in this uh, presentation in this deck is going to be the importance of emails because Facebook might shut down tomorrow. I mean, we don't know that, but let's say if Facebook shuts down tomorrow, how do we stay in contact with our audience? If TikTok shuts down tomorrow, how do we stay in front of our audience? The email list is gold. It is gold. So if you haven't started to grow that email list of yours, I invite you to start today. Okay. Uh, the next one is it's going to help you crush your competition because what we did see during the really, really tough times of COVID was that those individuals that had a really big presence online, those were the businesses that were getting even more business, right? The restaurants that were providing a delivery were the businesses that were really booming because other businesses, maybe they were providing delivery, maybe they weren't, but the audience, the individuals, the customers did not know whether or not they provided delivery. And finally, increased exposure, simple enough. So this is what I like to talk about. Exposure is the foundation. Exposure is the foundation of everything you want and need as a business, as an organization. It is the most important thing. If we want more followers, hey, we need more exposure. If we want more sales, hey, we need more exposure. We need to get on the radars of our customers and potential clients. So exposure is the foundation of everything. Uh, really quick in the chat. Uh, what is everyone's favorite social media platform? Can you, can you let me know that please? We're going to go through a couple of them, but, um, I want everyone to understand like exposure is everything, right? We, the, the thing is Instagram, awesome. Instagram, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, great Instagram. And, and here's the thing we're, 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 we'll do a quick little, um, rundown of the social media platforms, Facebook. Hey, look. Facebook is like the monster, right? 
Everyone should have a Facebook account. That, that's the truth. The thing is, let's see, awesome, Diana, great. Facebook and Instagram, Adrian, cool. So the, the thing is on Facebook, has anyone ever experienced like posting on your business page and you get zero likes or zero comments? Because that happens to me. Put in a one in the chat if that happens to you. That happens to me. And I could tell you this, I was working with uh, one of our older clients and we had about, uh, at the time, 120,000 followers on Instagram. So every single time we posted something, thousands of likes, thousands of comments. When we went onto Facebook and we posted the exact piece of content, uh, keep in mind, a really, really big company. Can anyone guess how many likes we got? It's, it's pretty surprising. <laughs> keep in mind, we, we probably would get like two to about like 8,000 likes every single post on Instagram. On Facebook, and this is a big shocker. On Facebook, we got about 23 likes. Big difference. So if you are in the same position where you're not getting like any likes or any comments, you're perfectly fine. Because the average engagement rate, and Dr. Sandy, this is, this is perfect. The average engagement rate on Facebook is 0.09%. So Facebook is already saying, for every 100 individuals that follow you, on average, you're going to get less than one like, less one, than one comment. So that's normal. So Facebook, and I, I tell you this because Facebook is an extremely tough platform to win at right now. Is it you because there's so many people money. on it? Or is it because well, that it's it, just it's, it's, it's because, less engaging? It's because they're, it's so saturated. That's what it is. It's so saturated. Every business is on there. And because of that, we're all competing for some screen space. And Facebook recognizes that competition and says, hey, if you want more screen space, you need to spend more money. So that's why Facebook, the, the window of opportunity on Facebook, it's pretty much closed. And that we're talking about organic. If you want to advertise on Facebook, it's still wide open. People are crushing it. Uh, we're crushing it on ads. It's a really great avenue for advertising. But as far as creating content, posting it, and not spending any money, my biggest recommendation would be to not spend all of your time on Facebook. So less engagement on Facebook because more people are just maybe watching it, but they're not actually participating at a higher level. They're not even looking at it. They aren't even looking at it. So Facebook isn't pushing out the content like it's pushing out the content on Instagram because Facebook owns Instagram. So we look at the average engagement rate, 0.09% on Facebook. On Instagram, it's actually 1.6% on average. 1.6%. So yeah, Luis, uh, the question is, if this is so saturated, isn't it smarter to have exactly who I need to contact? So yeah, so is it smarter to be on a platform that's really saturated? Yes, it is. But at the same time, if we're creating content and Facebook isn't pushing out our content to anyone, we're kind of just wasting our time. We can still reach our audience on something like Instagram. And my biggest recommendation is to focus all in on Instagram because higher engagement rate, the window of opportunity is still there on Instagram. And the great thing is because Facebook owns Instagram, whenever you post something on that platform, it automatically goes to Facebook. Now, the other way around, it doesn't work that way. You cannot post something on Facebook and it will automatically post on Instagram. It doesn't work that way. But if you focus in on Instagram, it will automatically share it to Facebook. So that's my biggest uh, piece of advice. If you want to be on two platforms, which I think is important, regardless of how much exposure you get on Facebook, um, I would focus in on Instagram because you will automatically start to build a presence on Facebook. So Facebook is really great for your, like you said, for the exposure. And then Instagram is going to be better for the engagement. And I'm assuming you're going to tell us how people are engaging on Instagram. 100%. But honestly, I would say Facebook is just a dead platform for most businesses. Wow. Yeah, it's a, it's a dead platform for most businesses. So if you are just starting off, I would not waste my time on Facebook. You, With the you, business part of it, obviously. Other right. social things and connecting with friends and community. Yes. Right. 100%. 
So this is the biggest thing, right? When we are able to increase our exposure, we increase the audience. And when we increase our audience, we increase our opportunity. The more people that know about the products and services that you offer, the more people that will purchase the products and services that you offer, right? There is literally no way to sell to someone when they don't even know you exist. You, and here's the thing. I'm sure everyone has gone to like a place that sells tacos and it's like a hole in the wall, right? It's a hole in the wall, but when COVID hits, unfortunately those hole in the walls were the first ones to go. Why? Because they didn't have the traffic. They didn't have the exposure. They didn't have the audience. Now on the flip side, how many, and put a one in the chat if this has ever happened to you. On the flip side, how many of you have gone to a restaurant just because everyone says, oh, you need to go try out these tacos. They're the best tacos out there. You get there and they're the worst tacos ever. But it's obviously like it's packed 24 seven and it's only packed because they have a lot of exposure. They have a lot of hype. They're using influencers. They have a big presence on social media. Have you guys been to one of those places before? <laughs> so how many of your clients know exactly who is their audience. Yeah, all of our clients know exactly who their audience is. And there's also a tool, Luis, um, there's a tool called Audience Insights on Facebook. So if you're just starting off, you can actually use this tool. I'm going to type it in right here. Oh, it's called Audience Insights on Facebook. Oh, I cannot type. Does Instagram have a similar um, feature? Yeah. Yeah, so um, it, it still pulls the same information. So it's a tool on Facebook and it'll pull information from uh, Instagram as well. And it will let you know who your audience is. So what type of magazines are they reading? What type of food do they eat? What are their physical activities? It will tell you a breakdown of your audience. Um, so it's an amazing tool. I know that we found, Mark, that in a lot of our small businesses, if they were able to pivot during the pandemic, mm -hmm. that means like if they were, even if they had just a, you know, they were a corner, you know, boutique and they had at least a hundred, you know, or less of their uh, customers' names on an email and they were sending them, you know, a quarterly newsletter, at least they were able to do that outreach to them. Yeah. So that they could email them and say, hey, we're doing, you know, sales over the phone or you can stop by and pick something up or here's a list of, you know, what's going on now um, or here's a list of our new hours. We found that those were the ones that were really more likely, I think, to survive during the pandemic if they had at least a little bit of an online presence, even if it was through just an Instagram page that they could push out and, and share that information. How do you feel about the information that should be kind of pushed out um, on, on those social media platforms? I might be getting ahead of your presentation. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, I mean, no, th that's a great question. And, and that's exactly what I'm, I'm trying to talk about, right? It's just like those who stayed close to their customers were the ones that survived, right? And when it comes to like content, like it, it's really important to let people know what you're offering and how you can help them out, right? It, it, social media, and I, I want everyone to understand this, social media is not difficult. If it feels difficult, then you're probably doing it wrong. That's the biggest thing there. If it feels difficult, you're probably doing it wrong because everyone here, I'm positive. Everyone here that's in this training knows exactly why someone should use their product or service, right? And since you know exactly why someone should use their products or service, you need to let the audience know that. And one of my biggest things is keep the main thing, the main thing. All right. If you want someone to purchase your widgets, hey, let people know this is how you can purchase my widgets. This is why you should purchase my widgets and make it easy for them to purchase your products. That's that's the biggest thing. If I say, hey, I, I want you to um, here's one of my new products. Like, OK, where can I find it? How much is it? Like, let people know, make it easy for them, because when people are on social media, they're not there to just buy constantly. So whenever they are in a buying mode, we want to make it simple for them. We don't want them to say, hey, go visit the link in my bio. And then the link in the bio goes to their website. And then you don't even know where their product is. So they're spending 10 minutes looking for that product. And then they have to go to the checkout. And then they go get their credit card. And at that 
point they have a meeting and they don't complete that purchase. You know, that stuff happens a lot. But if we can make it simple for individuals, go visit the link in my bio and it goes directly to that one product checkout page, then it's a two-step process right there. That's going to increase the conversion rate. Awesome, let's see. Oh, Dr. Sandy, I'm, I'm not sure. I, a taco space uh, didn't pop up in my head, but- uh, Oh, I'm no, no, I just meant now. overall. I meant overall, <laughs> who's doing a good job. I can think of some places yeah. that have motivated me. Uh, I'm a big Instagram. And so I, I do a lot of trolling on Instagram. <laughs> and when I'm looking at it, you know, in between, you know, commercials, watching TV or the news or something, um, I know, I know I've got some favorites that I'm more likely to click on. Um, who do you think has got a decent presence in San Antonio on Instagram that you uh, might follow? Yeah. I, I don't follow a lot of, uh, food accounts. I follow more of like, like, uh, the marketing psych- and stuff. Yeah. yeah marketing <laughs> and psychologists. That's okay. Who, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be food. Uh, Yeah someone in San Antonio that I think does really good. And I think everyone knows this person is uh, SA foodie. Yeah. She crushes it. And what is it about the thing that she's doing? So, so it's very interesting. First of all, she's making really good content. I mean, and, and and here's the secret. You don't need to have really good content to win. I'm going to share three key factors later on in a couple of slides. Oh, uh, Luis, it's SA foodie. And I'm talking, I think it's, I think it's, I like, gotcha. So it, it's, it's, you don't need the best content to win. I can tell you this. I was working with a client out in Austin. They sell cameras. Um, honestly, they didn't want to invest in good photography or videography. Their, the quality of all of their images was really pixelated. They were, it was two people. They were doing about 3 million a year. Like you don't need the best quality content to win because here's the thing we went from, and I'll tie back into SA foodie right now. We went from information when it comes to social media, whoever pushed out the most information one, then we went to content creation, which is whoever had the best quality videos, whoever had the best quality photos always won. And now we're in authenticity, which is perfect for all of us. It's perfect for all of us because here's the thing. Sometimes we don't have the best videographers or photographers, or we don't have the skill sets for that. But since we're in authenticity, we just have to show up the way we are. That's it. Um, Dan is my opinion. Oh, sorry, Diana, I, I missed that comment. Is it best to indicate the price of a product at the time we post a new item? Yeah, so uh, Diana and Michaela, you're completely correct. I agree with that. So um, here's the thing, and this is like quick sales. So this is a little bit outside of marketing. When we present a price up front, like the price might be a big price. People might not agree with it. But now what we're doing is we're filling up the gap with the value. So if I say, okay, this is my price, it's $5,000 for this mattress, the mattress does X, Y, Z, and then it also does this, and we're going to throw in the bonus, like that gap gets filled up with all the benefits. But if we wait to the very end to introduce the price, what happens is there's a gap now and we can't fill it up. So if I say, hey, you get this mattress that comes with X, Y, Z, and you get all these other benefits, oh, and then it's $5,000, now there's a gap. The gap might be smaller, but this, there's still a gap. So uh, my experience uh, working with like local businesses, multi-million dollar businesses, provide the price up front and then fill up the gap with uh, the value in there. And that's a little different from some of the, the like national shopping sites, right? Where they asking you to shop now and actually go to their website. And that yeah. for them is a metric because it's going to be the clickable type of thing. But we're not talking about that kind of national brand, right? We're talking about right. more of the small businesses where you're posting things and you want to let people know immediately how much this is going to be. Yeah, especially if it's like a new product, you know, especially if it's a new product. But back to SA Foodie amazing, amazing, amazing content. The other thing that she does very well is, I mean, this is a form of influencer marketing the other way around. Because 
here's the thing. A business can leverage influencers and, and influencers do not have to be accounts with 1 million followers. They can be someone with a thousand more followers than you. Like that's an influencer. The whole goal of working with an influencer is to tap into someone else's audience. SA Foodie pretty much does the exact same thing. She's creating amazing content, helping out that business, but in return, she's getting exposed to that business's audience as well. And that gives her more individuals, more followers as well. So for those of us that might not really understand what an influencer does, can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah. So an influencer is just any account. It doesn't need to be a celebrity. It's any account that you want to work with that will create more buzz for your business. I mean, I mean, someone that's going to push out your content on their page. 100%. And there's some influencers that don't, and I don't like working with these influencers, but there's some influencers that won't share on their page, but they'll provide photos or videos to me. That, that's, that's just like a content creator. An influencer is almost like a partner for your business. So an example of that, I think, would probably be, I know that I follow a couple of people on Instagram that model clothing. Oh, um, and, yeah. and And she will post where the bag is from, where the pants are from, where the shoes are from, where the sunglasses are from, and actually tag each of those. And it's so funny because, of course, at the end of the, in the comments, it's always like, hey, I'm, are you up for a collaboration? I'm so-and-so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's exactly how it works. So they're, they're almost like advocates of, it's a partnered advocate for what you do. And this, this works for products, this works for services. I'm a little bit different though, because my take on working with influencers is that you should never pay an influencer. That, that, that's, that's the way I run. Uh, I've worked with really, really big, uh, like NFL players, NBA players, um, like really big bloggers, like we're talking about millions of followers and we never paid any of them. How do you not pay them? Are they just all about the the product or the service? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's too many people out in the world. There's too many people out on Instagram, on Facebook that just like your product and they want to help out. And here's the other secret, like, and this is how we need to kind of like change our thinking. Influencers actually need us. Because without having anything to create content about, what are they going to create content about? Right? So if I'm, if I'm a, a food influencer and all the restaurants are shut down, what am I going to do? That hurts my account too. So influencers need your business, need your products, need your services just as much as you need them. So keep that in mind. And, and, and I say that because I see some uh, businesses where they'll spend thousands of dollars on an influencer and they don't know like what to expect out of it. Here's a couple of things you should expect out of working with an influencer. Uh, I would expect them to post on their account. So I was working with a hammock company. We got a couple of NFL players and NBA players um, to use the hammocks. They posted on their account. They sent us some photos. That was another thing. And then we also asked them to post on Instagram stories. All for free. My sister is a uh, influencer at uh, her local bar. Really? <laughs> and she goes every night um, and she takes pictures of people, asks them as they're sitting at the bar um, with their camera, asks them to post. Um, and then sometimes she'll take pictures of them and they'll post it on the, the bar's account and they're thrilled with it because it promotes their bar. Um, and then I think every now and then she might get a free drink. So <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Like, it, it's crazy. Like individuals here can also be influencers because like if you visit my Instagram account, it's all marketing. Like it, it's just like marketing tips, marketing tips, marketing tips. But I have done like uh, partnerships with uh, some venues where I get into concerts like like rappers because I listen to rap. Like I get into uh, rap concerts that I absolutely love in exchange for them getting more exposure. So I'll do a giveaway and they get more exposure about 
the event and I also get something out of it too, right? So I, I don't have millions and millions of followers. So you don't need to work with individuals that have millions and millions of followers. You don't need to pay them. It could be a trade-off, something as simple as that. A $20 ticket, I mean, come on, you know, $20 ticket, they got tapped into thousands more individuals. Like it, it's a good trade-off, win-win for everybody. Uh, Luis, yes, uh, there is a way to contact me um, at the very end of this presentation. So um, also, like this is important. Uh, exposure is really important. If you guys want to take advantage, there's something called Conversations to Conversions. It's on my Instagram. It's a free five-day challenge. Um, I'm really all about just like trying to help you guys out. Like that's the biggest thing. And this year, my initiative is to push out even more free content to help everyone out here. Um, so let's talk about Instagram Reels. This is something that uh, I spoke about that SA Foodie does very, very well. So the key thing here is that when we are working on Instagram Reels, we need to understand that Instagram Reels is a short form uh, video. So does everyone know what Instagram Reels are? Have you guys seen them before? Throw it in a one in the chat if you have. And throw in a number two if you know what TikTok is. Because, yeah, <laughs> TikTok, yep, Diana, Joanna, yep. So look, here's the thing, like TikTok, and this is what happened with Instagram stories. Snapchat was blowing up a while back. Snapchat was blowing up. I love Snapchat. I would do workshops on Snapchat. Um, and Facebook wanted to buy Snapchat. Snapchat said, no way, we're not gonna sell the company. So Facebook created Instagram stories, which is exactly what Snapchat is. And now it's very rare you run into a business that uses Snapchat. TikTok exploded. TikTok exploded, right? And everyone said, oh, that's for the kids. That's for the kids. You don't need to be on TikTok. All, all they're doing is just dancing. They're just dancing, right? Well, fast forward to right now, a lot of businesses are trying to figure out, hey, how do I get on TikTok? How do I be relevant on TikTok? And that window of opportunity is closing very, very fast. I can tell you this, my sister, she takes TikTok uh, very seriously and she streams and when she games and when she streams, she makes money, right? So it's like a business move for her. And she used to get thousands and thousands of likes. And at one point she had like 150,000, I think 150,000 uh, views on one post. Now on TikTok, it dropped down to like 300 on average. Why is that? Is that just changing tastes of money the population? Oh, okay. Money. And, and, and that, that's the key thing here. Like, look, the social media platforms are always going to change, right? They're always going to change. The algorithm is going to change. And that's the reason why I don't talk about the algorithm, because if I told you right now how the algorithm works, it could possibly not work tomorrow. And all the time because, we're spending here, it's, it's, it's a wash. Go ahead. Is it because people are always looking for something new and fresh? So like maybe next year, Instagram, we won't be talking about Instagram as much. No, Are we talking about another platform or it, something it, new? It's just like the, the platforms change like across all platforms, right? I mean, the algorithm changes, it changes very frequently. Last time I checked, which was maybe like five years ago, there was about 30,000 different metrics. So when people say, oh, I know exactly how the algorithm works, like, I don't know 30,000 different things off the top of my head, you know? So, so to me, that's hard to believe. Yeah, but we're human and we're always, our tastes are always changing. I mean, exactly. I actually dumped Facebook two years ago and I'm kind of happy that I did because I didn't, <laughs> I'm happy that I didn't have that rabbit hole during the pandemic, but that's me. Exactly. Um, and that's the thing. Humans are the one variable that will never change. The algorithm is going to change. The platform might be a different platform next year, but the end user will never change. You and I. Like how many habits have you tried? Like ask yourself, how many habits have you tried to break over the past couple of years? I mean, I mean, for me, I've been trying to get rid of coffee for years because I have like maybe three, I used to have five a day, but I'm down to about three. So like, that's like a habit for me. If we understand how humans work, that's why psychology and behavioral science is so important when it comes to all these platforms. If we understand how humans work, then we're going to crush every single platform. Like it doesn't matter. And 
about any of the changes that are happening, like focus on the humans. That, that's that's the biggest thing. So right? Mark, we've got about ten minutes. I want to make yeah. sure we get through all of your um, yeah. Let's do that. All of your good stuff. So let me know if there's anything else that we need to kind of discuss because yeah. I really, I re you have so many great points. I'm actually taking notes. <laughs> awesome. So um, yeah, let, let's let's run through this, and, and I apologize for getting off a little bit. Um, look, I, I'll give you the main points. Reels. Everyone needs to start making reels right now. It, reels are so important that Instagram made a section. Oh, made a section at the bottom of the screen. It's so important that there is a section for reels. Make reels, learn how to make reels, okay? And if you guys need help with anything afterwards, just like reach out to me, I'm very easy to contact. And if you need screen recordings, I'll send you a screen recording on how to do something. Um, look, deciding what platform to use, this is really important. There's two questions you need to ask yourself. Is my audience there? And what is the ease of me getting into a conversation? How easy is it for me to start a conversation with someone? Why? Because every sale starts with a conversation. That's why there's the conversations to conversions challenge I created. Every sale starts with a conversation. We don't know where people are in their journey and we don't know how to pitch our product or service until we get into a conversation with someone. Now, the first question, is my audience there? Look, here's the thing. Uh, demographics used to matter, not anymore. Your audience is on TikTok. Your audience is on Instagram. Your audience is on Clubhouse. Clubhouse is really important. Um, high ticket uh, businesses need to be on Clubhouse. Professionals, you need to be on Clubhouse. Um, your audience is everywhere. Pinterest, your audience is there too. So don't worry about, hey, is my audience there? I would be more concerned about how easy is it for me to get into a conversation. And this is what I created. This is uh, our little matrix for how easy is it to get into a conversation. Clubhouse is gonna be the easiest one. If you're not familiar with Clubhouse, it's an audio-based app. It's invite only. It's on Apple and Android now. So I know a lot of people are waiting because it wasn't on Android until like last week. Um, if you know how to talk on the phone, you know how to use Clubhouse. You don't need to learn how to take photos, take videos, create content ideas, you just need to know how to talk about your business. You just need to know how to talk about your industry. It's not a place where you go and pitch your services. It's a place where you go and connect. And because of that, it's extremely easy to get into a conversation. If you know how to use the phone, if you've ever been on a phone call, you know how to use Clubhouse. Instagram, this is going to be a very easy platform to get into a conversation with your potential customers and prospects. Uh, all the other social media platforms, uh, it's really, really tough. LinkedIn, here's the truth, 70% of people are outside of the United States. And most of your DMs, I'm sure, are full of people saying, hey, uh, we should connect. Oh, I, I'm in the same industry, we should connect, right? Um, so my main focus for businesses would be Clubhouse and Instagram, hands down. Conversations lead to conversions, always. There are six key factors, three of them will never change. Relationships, frequency, usage. If you can focus on these three things, I promise you, you will do good on any platform out there. Focus on relationships. This is you actually getting into conversations with people. Instagram went out there and said, they actually want you to do that. So if they're asking you to do that, you better do it. Frequency, it's not good enough to post once every month. Instagram tells you, Hey, we need you to show up consistently. Usage, Instagram told us last year, January, 2020, you need to be using the platform. Don't just post something, leave the platform. Post, engage, like, comment, follow, talk to individuals. They want you to use that. Why? Because if you stay on the platform longer, you consume more advertisements, they make more money. Everything comes down to money. Everything comes down to advertising. Micro content, if you're gonna take a screenshot, take a screenshot of this. Um, this is Instagram stories. All the platforms are creating stories. Great thing is it lasts 24 hours. The great thing about that is that you don't need to worry about being perfect because it's gonna to disappear tomorrow. But this is the easiest way to get into a conversation and the easiest way to get more exposure and feedback. There are two stickers that I want everyone to start using and this this is really important. 
the poll sticker and the question sticker. The poll sticker is going to be a this or that question. The question sticker is going to be a short form response. Now, the great thing about the poll sticker is that I can ask my audience who needs a mobile friendly website. People can vote me, not me. And because they voted, now I have a lead list. That's my sales, that's that's my sales lead list right there. That's a hot list of leads right there. Clubhouse, uh, really quick, this is how popular Clubhouse is. Look at it. That's how popular Clubhouse is. If you get in right now, this is equivalent to you getting into TikTok before TikTok exploded. You getting into Instagram before Instagram expo exploded. You getting into Facebook before Facebook exploded, right? That's what's happening right now with Clubhouse. Um, Clubhouse, I won't get into this, but Clubhouse is seriously three different screens. This is your main screen. You click on this and you're in a live session. It's equivalent to being on stage. You have speakers on stage. You have an audience over here. If you don't want to talk, you don't need to talk. If you do want to talk, you raise your hand. Simple enough. Um, there's free resources at, over at marknanias.com forward slash free. You can also visit my Instagram. Um, and my Instagram is going to give you free tips like all day on uh, marketing. And um, there's a lot more links on there for free resources. Uh, we do have a question right here. Uh, that's all beautiful, but uh, do we need to know our target market first? Yeah, your target market is extremely important. And that's going to really uh, drill down to hashtags and the people that you follow. So Luis, that, that is a great, great question right there. Um, target audience is first. And, but the main thing is like, we need exposure because I can know my audience all day, but if I'm not in front of them, Th that knowledge d does me no good, right? So you have to know where the, what they're looking at, really. Yeah. Is there a way to find that out? Or do you uh, just yeah, ask audience, them? Do you survey uh, audience them? Audience insights. Audience insights. Go to your competition. Um, and, and that's something that, like, that's why I tell a lot of individuals, you know, like, I get the question, where do I start off when it comes to hashtags? Um, there's tools, there's strategies for creating hashtags. But if you're lazy and you just don't want to do any work, go to your competitors. They did all the work for you. <laughs> take their hashtags, use those hashtags. Like, I like that. That's a really it's good It's simple point. enough, right? So Luis, you can definitely go to your competition, see who's engaging with them and you go engage with those individuals. Simple enough. Okay, good. Well, I wanna go ahead and open it up for questions now. Yeah. Um, we've got a, just a few minutes left. I wanna be mindful of everybody's time. Is there anything else? If anybody'd like to put anything in the chat? Um, and while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna give you my, my, all of my notes. Go ahead. Um, and uh, just as a reminder, this is being recorded. So we'll be posting this on our social media platforms and on our website. Awesome. Um, this is what I've learned today, uh, that Facebook is okay for exposure, but not for engagement. Uh, Instagram is great for engagement, um, but you have to be consistent. You have to like things and actually participate in it. And of course the content is paramount. That's the most important. We should all make and learn about reels. Uh, definitely put the cost of the product or service in your post. Uh, influences, influencers need your business, uh, but we don't need to pay them. Uh, the audience is everywhere and whichever platform is easiest for you to have a conversation is probably the best platform for your business. Uh, we're going to definitely all look into Clubhouse. Um, and then your customer conversion is really based on your relationship, your frequency, and your usage. And I love the idea of putting poll and stickers in your Instagram so that you can really engage and create your customer list. So I think that that's, those are great points. I really enjoyed having uh, you on today. Do we have any more questions or anything else that you would like to share, Mark? I want um, to make well, sure. Well, before. Luis wanted to know um, about like getting in contact with me, Luis on, um, on my Instagram and also marknanias.com for slash free. You can actually sign up for a free um, marketing strategy session. It's free and Luis, we can talk there. And like I said, that not only do um, is everybody uh, going to have access to this recording, everybody that participated today 
Um, we'll also uh, get a list of all of the participants. We'll send those to you afterwards with all their contact information. That's one of the things that we like to do as members of your Hispanic Chamber is to make sure that you can connect with everybody else that's on uh, this program today. So I just wanna thank our virtual audience for attending today's webinar. Of course, Mark Nanez and Nine Yes, thank you so much. This is great information, really appreciate it. And especially um, offering all of the uh, free resources that you have. So we definitely wanna check those out as well. Uh, like I mentioned, the link to the recording is available on the San Antonio Hispanic Chamber's website and our social media pages. And on behalf of the San Antonio Hispanic Chamber President and CEO, Marina Gonzalez, along with our chairwoman, Dr. Erica Gonzalez and our board of directors. We definitely appreciate your participation today and hope to see you at our next event. Thank you everybody. And especially thank, thank you, you to Mark. Thank you so much.